Welcome to another series of Africa Teaching, a production of the Pepperbird Magazine. I'm Karen McLaurin Chesson, your host. Today you will view a presentation that is a collaborative effort of the Department of Corrections and the Rhode Island Brotherhood of Correctional Officers. This presentation is an effort to deter our youth from interfacing with the criminal justice system. You will hear opening statements from the director of the Department of Corrections, A.T. Wall, and you also hear from Richard Ferruccio, the president of the Rhode Island Brotherhood of Correctional Officers. We hope this presentation will empower our youth to make the appropriate choices as they navigate their steps to make a difference in their lives as well as our society. My name is A.T. Wall. I'm director of the Rhode Island Department of Corrections and am pleased to present to you the department's SCORE program. This is a program that is educational in nature. It is designed to teach our youth about the inside of the prison system in an effort to keep them out. With the Brotherhood of Correctional Officers and departmental management, we have designed this opportunity available to adolescents across the state to teach them about the correctional system and to explain to them what life is like for inmates and staff here. It is run entirely by our own personnel who have knowledge and experience and it provides a safe and secure manner to give this information to young people, not in a way that will frighten or intimidate them, but will simply give them the facts about our operation. We hope that as they learn what's involved in an inmate's life and what the routines of prison are like, that they will strengthen their resolve to stay on the right side of the law. Hello, my name is Richard Ferruccio, and I'm the president of the Rhode Island Brotherhood of Correctional Officers. I'm excited about this opportunity to take the SCORE program on the road. Uh, SCORE has been a big success here in the Department of Corrections. Uh, we've brought thousands of children through this program, and I'd like to think that we made a difference in their lives. Um, but we are excited about taking this program on the road, and hopefully we're going to be able to reach many, many more children. I'd like to hear a little bit about SCORE and how we get started. Uh, over 10 years ago, a group of correctional officers had approached the union about trying to develop some type of a program to make a difference in the lives of children. At that time, uh, scared straight programs were quite common. Uh, so what we did is we put together a, a committee made up of uh, labor and management to, uh, to develop the who, what, where, when, how we would uh, come up with this program. Um, we were excited at that time because we saw the big need and we saw a, a group of uh, highly trained professionals here that had a lot to offer. Um, that committee um, was represented by the Rhode Island Brotherhood of Correctional Officers, by myself actually, I was the Vice President of the Union at the time, and the Warden of uh, Maximum Security was Walt Whitman. Ironically, he's the officer, he's the person that actually came up with the acronym SCORE. Uh, we put this together, we, um, we thought at that time that Scared Straight wasn't the direction to go, and we really wanted to have a program that was based on choices. Uh, we thought it was important to be able to explain to the children so that they could see what choices are all about, that the choices, anything that they were about to do in their lives as they got older, 
um, they had a choice. They could go one way or the other. And uh, we saw this uh, program as a, right, a way of really trying to ho hopefully get them to make the right choice. Um, the other thing we wanted to base this program on facts. Uh, one thing we, d we felt that we didn't want to do was to try and deceive children by any means. Um, what you're about to see with the SCORE program, these are the facts. These are not, uh, these are not rehearsed. These are inmates that uh, are up there telling uh, the choices that they made that have basically led them in here. Um, we also saw this as, as an opportunity to uh, basically um, highlight the men and women who work at the Rhode Island Department of Corrections. We have a, an incredible group of professionals that are dedicated to, uh, to doing the job here. And unfortunately, all too often we're uh, kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, many people think and hear the, uh, the TV stories or what, the, what the Hollywood would like to portray as a correctional officer. Um, that isn't the case. We have a group of professionals that actually put their, uh, their lives on the line every day to try and make a difference. And we saw this as a great opportunity to, um, to really show what we are and who we are and what we're all about. Um, we'd like to think that this program can and will make a difference in the lives of children, but hopefully that they're going to see that their choices that they will make um, could affect them for the rest of their lives. And really not only them, but that of their family and of other uh, people in the community. So I, I'd like to close by, uh, by thanking you for this opportunity. I am, uh, I'm excited that uh, we do have a chance to uh, take SCORE on the road. Thank you. It takes you longer in the morning to get dressed than it does for you to make a decision that affects the rest of your life. The road to prison can be paved in a second, or it can happen over a long period of drug and alcohol abuse. Regardless, no one dreams of spending their life behind bars. But for about 3,500 Rhode Islanders from all walks of life, their dreams are over or on hold. I killed a 26 year old man. Okay, I'm here for a crime for assault with attempted murder. If I needed a fix, as they call it, I would get that fix and I would rob you. My dad and her girlfriend was in the car with me. Plain and simple. Okay, crime is going to get you to prison. Years past, people. He's very unbearable. The Special Community Outreach Education, or SCORE program, was started at the Rhode Island Department of Corrections in 1994. A small group of employee volunteers decided to start an education program for teenagers. The program teaches about life on the inside in an effort to keep students out. Well, over the years, um, officers began to notice that the demographics of the prison system was changing. Instead of having older inmates who knew the result of their actions, we started to have younger inmates between the ages of 18 and 20, and one or two even 17 years of age. Uh, and these young people we saw did not know that they had a choice, that they could either choose to come to prison or they had a choice to stay in school and complete their education and have a bright future. So officers came together and decided that we needed to reach out to the community because as officers we are also parents and we also have an obligation to ensure that the young people in our community meet the standards of uh, good citizenship, of uh, being productive people in our society. The Rhode Island Department of Corrections program is often compared with programs in other states. In the SCORE program, we don't humiliate the kids, we treat them with respect, and we don't assume that they're going to end up here someday. The program works because of the honesty of the officers and the inmates. They tell the kids exactly how it is, and we just show them the reality of it. The SCORE program operates with about four or five employee volunteers. Facility lieutenants and officers recommend inmates for the program. Inmates are not rewarded for their SCORE program time. They do not earn time off their sentences or parole board letters. How the program works is that the students come up to the ACI at the training academy and there we have a class where officers explain to them 
and let them know of the different situations they can expect if they ever get arrested and brought to the ACI. Uh, we also have our weapons board and different um, uh, prison um, items that we show the children and let them know that these things are made by inmates and they are harmful to other inmates especially and sometimes officers. Uh, then we have um, inmates talk to the students and let them know firsthand of their experiences and how they got caught up in the system and what the system is all about and how they live on a day-to-day -day basis. The whole purpose of the program is to give the students a choice. It takes you longer in the morning to get dressed than it does for you to make a decision that affects the rest of your life. Most of the time, when I ask people that, it takes them 20 minutes or half an hour to get dressed in the morning time, but it only takes them a few seconds, maybe a minute tops, to get in that car after drinking, allowing a friend to drive drunk, doing drugs, breaking and entering, that they don't stand back and think about it. And if they actually took that time to think about it, they would see that it's either hurting themselves, the friends, the family, the loved ones, or the people that they affect. I'm a drug addict, and I have been a drug addict for approximately 22 years. I did the drinking and the smoking pot. I got tired of that and moved on to something better, which was pills. As more time went on, I decided I was going to try something else, which was cocaine. So THC. And as more and more time went on, people, my addiction got worse and worse and worse. I was out there stealing support the drug addiction. I was out there assaulting people to take their money, their jewelry, their sneakers, whatever I thought was worth any type of money, I would take it from them. I started running in stores, people, with guns, not realizing that those people that I was stealing and robbing from, that I was putting fear into them people, that they were also mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, that they had families out there. I was on my way home, I was driving down the highway, and I remember driving along and I ended up losing control of my car. I crossed the median in the highway and I smashed head on into a car coming in the, in the opposite direction. I caused that car to go airborne and land right on top of its hood, which ended up killing a 26 year old man and badly hurting his girlfriend who was in the car with him. Do you know what the number one cause of death is among people 21 years old and under? Anybody? Car accident? Right on the nose, car accidents. Um, and the majority of those involve alcohol and speeding. I'm not going to ask any of you to raise your hands. You might not feel comfortable doing that, but I pretty much, I know the statistics. I know that at least 70% of you are drinking or have had something to drink. I know at least half of you have been in a car driving after you've had something to drink, and probably at least 75% of you have been in a car with someone else who's been drinking. I know that. We all know that. Uh, my name is Michael Giorgio, and as you can probably gather, I'm going to be speaking to you about drinking and driving today. I am here in prison because I went to a basketball game one afternoon, decided, I made the choice that I was okay to drive home after I had some drinks with my buddies. I got into a car crash. I killed a young man, I badly hurt his girlfriend, 